By the way, if you want to make one too, you can find a whole set of plans with an optimised cutting list in my Etsy store, or if you already support me through Patreon or YouTube members, as a thanks you'll instantly get access to those for free. Starting with the four legs and line them up to evenly mark where the steps go. To screw it all together, this time I reach for my pocket hole jig, and that's kind of because I haven't mastered half lap joins on SketchUp yet, but obviously you're more than welcome to make that adjustment. And that meant in my case, it was vital I used glue as well as screws. If this is your first project, make sure you've got your drill on a low torque setting so it doesn't spin around and loosen the join. You might also be wondering why I'm not using clamps. And that's because while I'm screwing it together, making sure it's square with a speed square, I'm pushing it against the wall. So I'm kind of a human clamp. And that didn't take very long to knock up. And note, the top front piece isn't going to have a support because that would block my feet. Now I'm adding a support in the middle. This will hold the middle step. But if you are worried about pocket screws not being strong enough for your weight, you could also later add a screw from the outside. Just to give you some context, it's upside down at the moment. I just want to point out there's nothing going here and this is the front. So this piece I'm going to temporarily put on here. I've already made my mark because I might have to move that when the swinging mechanism is in place. Okay, so the majority of the framework is done. I wanted to try and go through my scrap pile and that was more challenging than I hoped for, even though I have a lot, but they're very random. For the middle shelf, I had some 20 mil MDF and I cut that to the internal width and Drew cut some notches out with a jigsaw so I could slot it in. Although I was worried I'd have to cut it in half. I'm hoping I don't have to cut this in half. And that is exactly what I had to do. But I later changed this to 12 mil ply with an extra support underneath to make it lighter. And the plans will reflect those changes. Now I'm moving on to what I thought was the most exciting part, the bottom step. After hand sawing two pieces to the same size, I'm asking to take them all together so I could cut the same corner off on my bandsaw. And those two side step pieces will have an 18 mil dowel going through, which is also going through the frame. And I absolutely didn't want to mess this up, so I'm measuring both sides like a mother flipper. Now, if you want to know how I work this out, and I'm quite pleased that I learned how to do it, on SketchUp there's a pivot function, and I was able to rotate the step to see whether it would move around without hitting the middle shelf. But I was inspired by another YouTuber called Fisher's Shop. I'll leave the link below where he used this dowel technique and I had an off court it just made sense and because I needed this to be right as a test I first drilled center with a small drill bit then offered up my two side steps to temporarily screw to the frame allowing me to check it first before I went for it and once I knew it was okay to go ahead I used that small drill bit hole as a placement for my 18 millimeter flat wood drill bit in the drill press and because I already had a screw hole in the two sides of the small step, I could use it as a reference and drill straight through it together. And at this point, I'd made my mind up to just use 12 mil for the top of the step section. As long as I had supports there, it'll be sturdy. And I didn't want it to be too tight while I opened and closed it, so I offset them a bit. For that, I just glued and screwed it. And after cutting the top piece, I gave it a quick 45 degree chamfer around the edges and screwed it to the sides. I love this little step, it's so cute. Another thing I did was dry screwed another support piece where the angled side steps would be resting on. I'll come back to gluing that properly later. I don't need that bit under here anymore because I go like that and it automatically stops here. That's not going anywhere, so yeah, very happy. Right, let's test the first two. Now the reason I'm walking so gingerly up there is purely because I have a sports injury on my knees. If I physically could do some jump testing on it, I really would. Anyway, something that I didn't show on camera because you'd already seen me cut the MDF one is that I cut another 12 mil piece for the middle. I could have gone all the way to the back, but I didn't want it unnecessarily heavier than it needed to be. But I definitely added another support there, but the 20 mil thick stuff probably didn't need it for me. I liked how this was coming along. Also, I noticed that I kept having to reach down to put the bottom step away. So I decided to add a handle there that was easier to reach or pull it open with my foot. There's not going to be any weight on it, so I glued and nailed that in place. Now, remember when I said I wanted to leave a gap between the step and the frame so it wouldn't be too tight? I decided to make some homemade rings by ripping down some thin plywood, drilling an 18 millimeter hole and gluing them together to double up. I didn't want to get my fingers too close on the bandsaw, so I decided to glue them crisscrossed 
and clamp them together. Then I could come back and hand saw those sharp edges and hand sand them as smooth as I could be bothered with. Now for the top piece, which would be my seat, that definitely needed to be split in half. Again, I was gonna use some 20 mil thick wood, but instead I acquired some planks. This time, because they're quite small, I went for pocket holes that wouldn't be seen, at least so I thought. And I could have filled it with wood filler, but I found some 10 millimeter dowels that were just a little bit too big and I decided to hand sand them, which was tedious, but it was quicker to do that than wait for a delivery in the post or go out to the shop. And after fixing with glue, coming back the next day and using my flush trim tool, don't fall off your chair. I was then left with the perfect angles to fit in some of the others, but I couldn't be bothered to do that with the rest of them, just the ones that you'd immediately see. But I'm getting closer to finishing it, so I knew I could glue and screw that bottom support piece in. For the seat top, after leaving the glue to dry, there was a minute gap I could see where they joined, so I filled it with wood glue and immediately sanded over it so any sawdust would settle inside. And while it was in my hand, I may as well sand the frame as well. And to tidy it up, I went over all of the sharp edges, again with my favourite 45 degree chamfer router bit. For the top though, I didn't chamfer where the piano hinges would join them together. And to cut them to the length I wanted, I used my tough built tin snips. And that was dead easy for the leaves, but for the knuckle, it was a different story. And I had to hacksaw that bit off. Even though I did a test with the hinges to make sure they were going the right way on some offcuts, I still made a mistake and installed them the wrong way round. That didn't go right. I need to go uh, that way. Good job I didn't put all the screws in. Okay, I had them the wrong way round. So the chamfered edge should be kissing each other. I also had to make sure that the hinge was dead centre all the way across, otherwise my seat wouldn't be level. I'd mark and pierce my screw holes with a brad awl, drill with a two mil drill bit, and it's quite likely that a screwdriver, even on the lowest torque, is gonna be too fierce for it. So I'd spray a little bit of WD-40 silicon in the holes or on the screw, hashtag Instagram ambassador this year, and that would make it easier to hand screw them. To fit it, I didn't want screws visible from the top, and flipped it upside down to drill and screw it from underneath. But make sure that when you flip it open, those plugged pocket holes are the ones that you see. That's obviously if it's important to you. I like it. Finally, we're at the stage where we can fix the step in place, but I had to push one slightly out to put the glue in there. Classy. Push the sacrificial bit of dowel out, pop it in the other side and then push it back through. This is purely to allow it to pivot and once it was completely dry, I flush trimmed that and went over with a sander again. So what do you think? Well, disclaimer alert, I absolutely love it.